Respiratory failure is a clinical condition in which the respiratory system fails to maintain its main function, which is gas exchange, in which PaO2 is lower than 60 mm of mercury and PaCO2 is higher than 50 mm of mercury. So what exactly is this PaO2 or PaCO2? PaO2 is the partial pressure of oxygen in blood and PaCO2 is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. Both of these are measured with a test called arterial blood gases. Please refer to our video lesson on PaO2 and PaCO2 in arterial blood gas to learn more. Here we will discuss respiratory failure, its etiology, pathophysiology, classification, diagnostic approach, prognosis, and treatment option, overall everything. So let's start with the classification. Respiratory failure is classified according to blood gases abnormalities into type 1 and type 2. Type 1 is hypoxemic and type 2 is hypercapnic. Hypoxemic means the PaO2 in arterial blood is less than 60 mmHg and hypercapnic refers to PaCO2 of more than 50 mmHg. There are also two more types, type 3, perioperative. This is generally a subset of type 1 failure but is sometimes considered separately because it is so common. Type 4, it's due to shock, which is secondary to cardiovascular instability. Classification on the basis of onset is done based on course and duration, into acute, chronic, and acute on top of chronic respiratory failure. We will learn each of the types in separate videos. For now, let's understand the etiology of respiratory failure. Respiratory failure occurs due to either a pulmonary or extrapulmonary cause. Alveolar abnormalities that cause type 1, hypoxemic, respiratory failure, such as pulmonary edema and severe pneumonia. Exacerbation of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and acute severe bronchial asthma seen in type 2 respiratory failure are examples of upper and lower airway obstruction. Peripheral nerve system disorders include, Guillain-Barre syndrome and myasthenia gravis both cause respiratory muscle and chest wall weakening. As in situations of narcotic overdose, the CNS produces suppression of the neurological impulse to breathe, which is shown in type 3 respiratory failure. Type 4 respiratory failure which has the highest fatality rate, is caused by shock, either hypovolemic or septic shock, which causes a mismatch in perfusion due to a diminished blood supply. Now let's understand the pathophysiology of respiratory failure. There are three main mechanisms of respiratory failure we need to look for. First hypoventilation, then VP mismatch or ventilation perfusion mismatch, and last but not least shunt. We will discuss each of these here. Hypoventilation, which is caused by drug-induced CNS depression. Hyperventilation means breathing too slowly, which results in inadequate oxygen supply to the demands of the body. This commonly happens due to reduced respiratory drive. Next, the VP mismatch. The most common cause of hypoxemia is a VP mismatch. Hypoxemia is eliminated when 100% oxygen is administered. Ventilation perfusion mismatch is a condition in which one or more areas of the lung receive oxygen but no blood flow, or they receive blood flow but no oxygen. Last, the shunt, a condition in which despite 100% oxygen inhalation, there is prolonged hypoxemia. When a shunt is present, deoxygenated blood, mixed venous blood, traverses the alveoli without being oxygenated, mixing with oxygenated blood that has passed through the vented alveoli, resulting in hypoxemia, as seen in pulmonary edema, pneumonia, and atelectasis. Now, how do we diagnose or evaluate acute respiratory failure, what investigation are necessary, let's have a look. To confirm the diagnosis of respiratory failure, arterial blood gases are required. Chest radiography is required because it can detect lesions in the chest wall, pleura, and lung parenchyma. The following investigations may be required to determine the underlying cause of respiratory failure, a full blood count to rule out infection. Cultures of sputum, blood, and urine to evaluate specific bacteria. Tests of pulmonary function to rule out COPD and pulmonary fibrosis. In some cases, bronchoscopy is useful. There are basically four goals of treatment in patients with respiratory failure. First is the correction of underlying gas abnormalities. Second, treating infection and secondary causes of infection. Next, improving extrapulmonary functions to improve respiration. And lastly, management of long-term complications of the disease.
So, let's understand how to correct the gas abnormalities in respiratory failure. Correction of underlying gas abnormalities includes correction of hypoxia. The objective is to maintain sufficient tissue oxygenation, which is typically achieved with an arterial oxygen tension of 60 mm Hg or an SpO2 of roughly 90%. Oxygen toxicity and CO2 narcosis can occur if oxygen supplementation is not regulated. To learn more about CO2 narcosis watch the video above. As a result, the inspired oxygen concentration should be set to the lowest level necessary for tissue oxygenation. Depending on the clinical condition, we may utilize a nasal cannula, a basic face mask or non-rebreathing mask, or a high-flow nasal cannula to supply oxygen. Then, correction of hypercapnia. This can be accomplished by either addressing the underlying cause or giving ventilatory assistance. Supportive ventilation for a patient with respiratory failure. The following are the objectives of ventilatory assistance in respiratory failure. First, rectify hypoxemia and acute respiratory acidosis should be treated as soon as possible. Treating infection and secondary causes of infection. Antibiotics to be used to treat infection are beta-lactam inhibitors, amoxicillin clavulinate, ampicillin, sulbactam, piperacillin, and tazobactam. Alternatives include ceftriaxone plus clindamycin or metronidazole and a respiratory fluoroquinolone. Next thing we need to do while management of respiratory failure is to treat extrapulmonary cause of failure. Extrapulmonary causes of respiratory failure include conditions that exclusively or primarily cause respiratory failure by their effect on structures other than the lungs that is the extrapulmonary compartment. So what are the extrapulmonary causes of ARF? Cardiogenic edema, nephrotic syndrome, metabolic acidosis, and sepsis. Second major cause is CNS depression due to drug overdose and narcotics, then poisoning, subdural hemorrhages in ventricles and midbrain also cause reduced respiratory drive. We need to look for extrapulmonary etiology and treat it accordingly. Lastly, long-term management of respiratory failure includes management of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, management of pulmonary fibrosis and interstitial lung disease. Have you noticed that these all are chronic condition, which causes chronic respiratory failure, which can significantly reduce the quality of life? One of the major topic we need to discuss at last is ventilator support in patients with respiratory failure. The decision between invasive and non-invasive ventilatory support is based on the clinical circumstances, the severity of the disease, and whether it is acute or chronic. It also relies on what caused the problem in the first place. In cases of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease COPD, exacerbation, cardiogenic pulmonary edema, and obesity hypoventilation syndrome, non-invasive ventilation is preferred if there are no absolute indications for invasive mechanical ventilation or intubations and if there are no contraindications. Supportive ventilation for a patient with respiratory failure. The following are the objectives of ventilatory assistance in respiratory failure. Rectify hypoxemia with acute respiratory acidosis should be treated as soon as possible. The following are some of the most common reasons for mechanical ventilation. Respiratory arrest and apnea. Tachypnea with a breathing rate of more than 30 breaths per minute. Disturbance of consciousness or coma. Muscle exhaustion in the lungs. Instability of the heartbeat. Supplemental oxygen fails to raise PaO2 to 55 to 60 mm Hg. And hypercapnia with a pH of less than 7.25 in the arterial blood. Don't worry if you didn't get the treatment part, because we are going to discuss each type of respiratory failure in next videos. Subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notification. Thanks for watching and keep learning. Thank you.